1582. That's the total number of lead code problems it took for someone to crack meta. For most normal people like you and me, solving so many problems on lead code is almost impossible. In fact, in a recent survey that I conducted on LinkedIn, only 6% of the total people who responded had solved more than 500 problems. And this brings me to one good and one bad news that I have for you all. The good news is that lead code is not enough. You can easily do better than someone who has solved more lead code problems than you. The bad news though is that lead code is not enough. If you are thinking that solving lead code problems is all you need to crack coding interviews, well, this video is for you. There are so many other things that are equally, if not more important than practicing lead code problems. Let's do this. The path itself is the goal. A coding interview is not just about solving the problem. It's also important how you get there. Take this example of a very famous problem called FizzBuzz, which most of you can easily solve. You are given a number n. For all numbers less than or equal to n, print fizz if the number is divisible by 3. Print buzz if the number is divisible by 5 and print fizz buzz if the number is divisible both by 3 and 5. If none of the conditions are true, just print the number itself. Here is a very simple solution for this problem. Go through all the numbers from 1 to n. Check if the number is divisible by both 3 and 5 and print fizz buzz if it is. Otherwise, check if the number is divisible by 3 or 5 and print fizz and buzz respectively. If none of this holds, just print the number. To most people, this code would look perfectly fine. But can you spot the problem with this code? You can pause the video to give yourself a moment to think. If you look closely, the condition if the number is divisible by 3 or 5 is being checked two times. Now let's say I change the problem from multiples of 3 and 5 to multiples of 3 and 7. You will have to change 5 to 7 at two different places. For a simple piece of code like this, that might be okay. But when you're working in big code bases, this is not a good practice. So by asking a question as simple as fizzbuzz, the interviewer can easily see if you are going to pollute their code base. Better way to write the same code would be this. Start with an empty output string. If the number is divisible by 3, append fizz to it. If the number is divisible by 5, append bus. If the output is empty, set it to the number itself and print the output. In your quest to solve problems using Prim's algorithm, do not forget to write clean code in the interview. Always think about the readability and maintainability of your code and stay away from the one-liner solutions. Clarity of thinking and communication is another thing that is very hard to learn from lead code. I have kept clarity of thinking along with clarity of communication because I believe that you cannot communicate effectively if you cannot think clearly. The great American writer Mark Twain in a letter to his friend wrote, Sorry for writing such a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. Effective communication is short and simple and that's what makes it hard. Let's take an example to understand what strong communication skills look like in a coding interview. You are given a list of intervals that might be overlapping. You need to merge all the overlapping intervals and return a list of non-overlapping intervals. So if you are given two overlapping intervals like this, you need to return a list with only one interval that has both intervals merged. Let me give you a moment to pause the video and think how you would communicate your solution. Here's what I would say. I would sort the intervals first. Then I will start at the first interval and keep merging it with the next interval until I see an overlap. When there is no overlap, I will add the merged interval to my answers. And then I would do the same thing with the next unmerged interval in the list. By saying this, you have done two things. One, you have painted quite a picture for your interviewer. She knows what to expect when you start writing the code. Two. You have already made the code that you are about to write very clean. You have said things like, I will merge intervals. So you will need a helper function to merge intervals. You have also said that you will merge only if you see an overlap. So you know that you will have a helper function called can merge, which you would use to check the overlap of intervals. Now all you need to do is to put your code where your mouth is. Sort the intervals. Start with the first one. And if you can merge, merge it. If not, Add it to the answer and do the same thing with the next interval. Clarity of thinking plus clarity of communication with the clarity of code. It's a deadly combination and no number of lead code questions can teach you all three. When I told you how I would communicate my solution, there is a minor detail that I skipped. I assumed that your interviewer can understand and speak English as well as you expect. Well, that's not always possible. Imagine that you get an interviewer with a strong accent like me on YouTube. You can just skip my video, but I do not recommend that because there's a good chance your interviewer might have a similar accent as me. I think it will serve you well if you subscribe to the channel. Anyway, in such cases, you will have to find other aids beyond verbal communication. 
One of these is math, because math is sort of a universal language. You can also communicate via writing if needed. Walk through some test cases in writing before starting on the code. Remember that in an interview, the onus is on you to clearly communicate what you are thinking. I see so many people blaming the interviewer when they are unable to do so. Don't do that. It will not help you in the long run. Being present is another thing that LeetCode cannot help you with. Imagine that you are working through your solution to the problem and your interviewer thinks that there is something wrong with the code you wrote, but you are fairly confident about what you have done. What would you do in this moment? Well, interviewing is a collaborative exercise and you need to be present in the moment. Don't just go with your train of thought and keep writing code. Take pauses and address any questions the interviewer might have for you. Many times, the interviewers want to help you when they ask you questions. So pay attention to your interviewer. Another time you need to be fully present in the interview is when your code fails to compile or gives a wrong answer. Read the error message carefully rather than doing some random changes hoping that it would fix the problem. This is a sign of an inexperienced programmer and it leaves a bad impression on the interviewer. Use this as an opportunity to show your interviewer how good you are at debugging. If the interviewer likes your debugging process, she will rank you as well as if not better than someone who solved the problem on the first go. Another thing that LeetCode cannot teach you is how to talk about your past projects. There are three key questions that you want to answer when talking about your projects. What did you do? How did you do it? And what was the impact? What you did is going to be a quick summary of the project and why you did it in the first place. How you did it is where most beginners make mistakes. When explaining the how part, you want to convey two things to the interviewer. One, they should be able to see why the project was challenging. Two, they should be able to see that the project had a big scope. It's not always possible to achieve this with every project, but that's the goal. After establishing how you achieved the final outcome, you want to make a strong statement for the impact. Many people completely miss this step. Ideally, you want to talk about some key metrics here. These metrics are called by different names like key performance indicators or KPIs, or objectives and key results or OKRs. I will leave a link for you to learn more about them in the description. Having said all that, Practicing interview style problems on LeetCode is still the most important step in cracking coding interviews. If you want to know the LeetCode strategy I use to crack Google, Meta and Amazon, watch this video. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.